And it makes absolute sense that they don't understand because you're not born with the skills to analyze profits at a company. These are all learned behaviors. And most people who are starting businesses like me and you early on, yeah, we didn't have those skill sets. My name is Eric Castellano. And I'm Sebastian Swick. And uh, we're business partners, best friends for, what, two decades now? Mm -hmm. uh, we, we do a lot together, and we also operate a very large Amazon wholesale business. And on the side, we teach people how to build their own very profitable Amazon businesses as well. So also we help, you know, dozens of businesses scale out their operations and really hone in on their profitability, you know? Um, and, and what are some things, I know a few off the top of my head, but some things that you see that are very common themes when these companies come to us and they're just like, Eric, I got a big business. I'm doing big numbers, but I'm just not making the type of profits that I'd like to make. I think what I see most frequently is that people forget the importance of proper training, that you're going to bring employees in. That doesn't mean they're not passionate, but they, they might not have the same passion as you because this is your company. Mm. And so they need to be properly trained. And training isn't just a one-day thing, a one-week thing. It's consistent mm. with our buying team, with our developers, with our warehouse team. We have multiple week meetings a week. And quite frankly, you know, it seems like some of them that we've had discussions with, they it would be lucky if they had a meeting a month with them, mm. let alone training. You know yeah. what, what we do with our, with our VAs right now and with our buying team in general, but with our VAs, we have... Uh, an hour meeting every day. We're reviewing their purchase orders. We're reviewing listings where they might have missed opportunities yeah. on. And we're kind of getting them to think the way we do. We want them to see the way we do, get them fully enveloped in our business. So then they can repeat the process. Mm -hmm. So then you have another Eric, you have another Sebastian working for you. Otherwise, when people are failing, at least for, for what I've seen, 90% of the time it's improper training. Mm. Mm. Which adds up over over the course of time, you get a couple improperly trained people. And before you know it, right. your business is declining. Right. And it happens over the course of time, but it's almost because you're in the day to day. It's so tough to see it. Right. And then when you realize it, it's almost too late. Right. You know, and so some things I see commonly are just not analyzing products and suppliers enough. You know, there's, it's okay to not sell a product or to drop a supplier because the margins that you're expecting aren't being supported anymore. And I think a lot of people, they get so comfortable either reordering the same private label product or dealing with the same distributor for wholesale that instead of branching out and creating new products and finding new relationships, they're comfortable and they just keep buying and buying and repeating the same process. You know, the reason we're here in Austin, really, I wanted to discuss with you about profitability and the importance of that and what it's mm. been like for not only our company, but different companies we work for, you know, what, what that represents and why so many younger entrepreneurs who are just starting off really don't understand the financial health of their company. Yeah. And it makes absolute sense that they don't understand because you're not born with the skills to analyze profits at a company. These are all learned behaviors. And most people who are starting businesses like me and you early on, yeah, we didn't have those skill sets, you know, but over time we've been able to develop them and really hone in on our profitability. Yeah. I think it's exciting too. In the beginning, you're looking at top line revenue and that's growing. And so you almost intuitively believe that the company's growing, yeah. right? Revenue's growing. The company needs to be growing. And mm. it, it, it's it's important to be excited and passionate because if you're not, the business will fail. Mm. So there has to be that emotional tie to it. Yeah. But then as you grow, you need to understand where else to look in your company to know whether you're growing in the right direction. Because you could be growing, but in the wrong mm. direction. And for, for our Amazon business, that happened what, like, it was 2018-ish, I believe. Uh, 2018, somewhere around there, yeah. 2019. Yep. I remember we had that long discussion. Yeah, and we were pumping out some serious numbers on Amazon, uh, but the, just the profitability was declining. It declined, yeah. It was year declining. Year over year, yeah. We saw yeah. a decline. And so we really dove into our company and we said, hey, we need to really start analyzing our metrics, our, our average profit per ASIN, net profit per sale, and dive into this data as well as getting more efficient in our warehouse and our and our employee optimization. What is that shift for you? What do you, what do you look for to not 
become complacent and to want to shift and to and what what is that driving factor? Yeah, yeah. So I, I could share some some data that I'm looking at, some exact numbers, you know. So production cost per ASIN is essentially what it costs you to get one product out the door of your facility. You know, for us, we average right around a dollar, which is very healthy. And we ship about 300,000 orders a month. So if we were to add a quarter to that production cost per ASIN, you're talking $75,000 a month taken out of our pocket. You know, so really analyzing these metrics and understanding that, hey, my average gross profit per sale is 18%. You know, my average net profit, what I put back in my pocket per sale is 7%. Right. You know, and then figuring out the production cost and how to decrease it really allows you to scale your operation. Yeah. And Amazon provides tons of programs, whether it's like referral incentives on certain categories. Mm. Um B2B, they, they have pilot programs where now multi-tiered purchasing reduces fulfillment costs, small and light program with fulfillment cost reduction, offsite, you you kind of introduced me to offsite interaction and, and discounts on that for Amazon sellers. Yeah. So, I mean, Amazon provides a lot of different programs which could reduce your ASIN costs that sellers just aren't aware of.